Good morning from Nairobi. It's a great day here. It's beautiful. I'm out walking in the garden, getting ready to enter the chapel. That's where I'm going to do the post today about the Apostle Paul. I love being here. I really do. You know, every morning while I've been on this thing that people call rest and say that I must do, I consider it torture. So every morning I get up and I sit in my chair quietly and I wait for God to start talking to me. And then I start working on the blog or the message that God's giving me. Whatever you want to call these things that I do. All I know is it's how God talks to me. So this morning I've been sending many messages, getting ready to get back at the mission. I'm literally waiting on something that should arrive today or tomorrow. Once it arrives, all systems are go. As I continue to think about the Apostle Paul, um, I keep looking at 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 1 through 11. But it became so lengthy today that I'm only going to cover verses 1 through 5. And this is where he talks about the things that have happened to him. I'm only covering those first five verses, like I said. So let's go there. 2 Corinthians 12, 1 through 5. It is not expedient for me, doubtless, to glory. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago, whether in the body or out of the body. I cannot tell. God knoweth such a one caught up to the third heaven. And I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body. I cannot tell. God knoweth. How that he was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words, which it is not lawful for men to utter. Of such a one will I glory, yet of myself I will not glory, but in my infirmities. So look around this chapel. Look how beautiful it is. It's the place where they have service in the mornings and it's packed out. Six days a week, 7.30 in the morning till 8 a.m. They have church. This is the Catholics. God moves. There's a sweet presence in this place. A sweet spirit of God. Yet we have trouble just showing up a couple times a week, let alone on time. Anyway, let's go back to our second Corinthians. So I know you know by now I'm a point person. Um, so let's look at the points by verse. We'll start with verse 1. Paul wants us to know a few things first. He says, telling you these things doesn't help me, but you're forcing me. And then he says, so I'll tell you about the visions and the revelations God has shown me. And then in verse 3 he says, I know I'm talking about myself, but I feel the need to do it as if I'm talking about someone else. In my mind, it's in my mind, I'm talking about me now. In my mind, it's so that he doesn't become prideful. He wants to make sure that God gets the glory. When was the last time we did that? And then he says, so, I knew this man 14 years ago. I don't know what happened to him. I don't know if he was having an in-body experience or an out-of-the-body experience, but something was happening to him. And then he says, wow, he was caught up into the third heaven. Only God knows what was happening to him. And then in verse 3, I hear Paul saying, Can you believe that I know this man? And then he says, I don't know if he was having an in-body experience or an out-of-body experience. I just know what happened to him. And then he says, Only God really knows what happened. I don't know. And then, in my mind, I'm talking about me now, I can hear Paul's thoughts. I can hear him in his mind saying, Can you believe I know this man? Can you, can you believe God let this happen? And then, I, then he says, in that verse, he goes, he went to paradise. I lost my place. He went to paradise. He heard words he can never say. He can never say those words because it's against God's law. And then in verse 5, he says, I'll talk about the amazing things that God has let him do. I won't talk about me. I won't lift myself up, but I'll only tell of my struggles and my problems. So Paul talks of himself as if he's talking of someone else. Knowing what I know now about God, 
and how he works through me, I get it. I understand. People who don't walk closely with God have no idea what they are missing out on. And this morning, I can't quit thinking about a question I saw the other day on one of the websites. And it said, speaking in tongues, a one-time experience or a continuous practice, which must Holy Ghost filled Christians speak in tongues every day? Your thoughts? The question wasn't a problem for me. It was the responses that bothered me. One person said they had only spoken in tongues when they received the Holy Ghost 25 years ago. That made me want to weep. My God, what's wrong with our churches? No wonder we're having problems. Our power with God's found in our prayer life. The Bible says, Luke 12 and 12, for the Holy Ghost shall teach you in the same hour what you ought to say. Or John 14 and 26, but the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. I feel so sorry for people who consider speaking in tongues as a one-time experience. No wonder saints can't be surrendered. They lack the power to surrender, even with the Holy Ghost power in a prayer life that I consider mediocre at best, and I'm talking about my prayer life. I, uh, I pray until I feel that holy unction, speaking in an unknown language or tongues before my God in worship. It's something sacred and beautiful before me and God. This is not the gift of tongues. This is just how I communicate with God. To be surrendered in our worry, it takes time alone with God. Look at the chapel. No one's in here. Our churches are empty more than they have people in them. There's plenty of time people could go to the churches and pray. But do they? No. Mm -mm. Too busy. Too much to do. Too important. Well, honey, someday you may be too important to go to heaven. I don't ever want that to be said about me. You see, we need to be full of the Holy Ghost and fire to get over things that bother us. If you build a fire once but never add wood, you never stir the fire, it goes out. My analogy is if you get the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues once 25 years ago, but you've never stirred the fire or the flame of the Holy Ghost by praying until you speak in tongues, isn't the fire gone? Fire equals the Holy Ghost. In Hebrews, it tells us our God is a consuming fire. You see, that's why so many of us can't surrender our worries to God. We can't surrender our problems because we don't want to work at our walk with God. It requires us to know him. It requires us to be cleansed. Paul himself knew well enough how easily he would be able to get caught up in what people would say about him, putting him on a pedestal. He knew that was a disaster that was looking for a place to happen. Paul chose to be happy in every problem that he had. It's a choice we make. We choose to worry or we choose to let God be in control. You can't have it both ways. To be truly surrendered in our worry, we have to learn from Paul's example, choosing to be happy no matter what. How? It's simple. It's called an altar. It's called walking back into the church to pray, putting our all on the altar and giving God everything we've got. Pray until we feel the fire of the Holy Ghost and we speak in that unknown language to us. You see, I'm nobody special. I'm struggling right along with everybody else. I've just learned to pray. I've learned to put it all on the altar and let God be in control of my life. Trust me, it's hard. I have problems. I have thorns. And tomorrow, I'll go over the rest of those verses, or I hope I will. It depends on how lengthy it gets. But today, it's time for us to surrender our worries to God. And the best way to start that is to pray until we pray through when we truly pray through and give God everything, we'll find we're happier. It's when we are the ones shouldering our burdens 
instead of letting God be the one shouldering them. Give your burdens to Jesus and leave them on the altar for him to take care of, not you. Y'all have a blessed day. Know that I'm praying for you. Know that I'm in a safe place relaxing this week, enjoying my time with God. Bye.